Hey, my name is Tiffany Talent, and the skill that I chose to do is geometry, spatial sense. Um, spatial sense is the ability to be aware and understand the relative position of oneself and objects in space or in your environment. It is important for children to develop this skill because the world is full of geometry. Understanding spatial relationships will help children understand and move around in the world better and appreciate what they see. Children who develop this skill tend to be better problem solvers, able to communicate about positions and relationships between objects. They give and receive directions better and are, ab are better able to imagine changes taking place in the world. If this skill is not developed, kids and even into adulthood will have problems with presentation skills, they'll have difficulty organizing and structuring, they might have some visual perception problems, appear to be clumsy and bump into objects, difficulty playing games, they'll have problems with positional and directional language, problems reproducing patterns and shapes, and difficulty understanding abstract math concepts later on. Children first learn spatial sense from their everyday movement and motor activities. For example, a baby learning to crawl, they are, they're in their environment, they're moving around, they might crawl into something, bump into something, get stuck. Next time they'll think, wait a minute, um, too big to fit into that space. So that they're now judging that their body is bigger than that space. Teachers can help students learn this skill through movement activities involving the whole body. For example, in my group time last year, we had the students take their hand and then place it on top of their head, behind their back, that's learning their positional language words. Also action games, puzzles, climbing and balancing activities. Students also develop special sense when they build with blocks, make two and three D collages, give, receive, and follow directions like on a map or verbal directions. They arrange tes tessellations, complete patterns and tangrams, and verbally label positions and directions. Teachers need to remember that children where, will develop this skill over time at an individual pace. The best assessment can be done through observing students in their environment as they manipulate objects and students need to practice with, with actual physical objects like uh, drawings and computer tools. And students at this age recognize things as holes. They can see that maybe this is a rectangle and they can see that this is a triangle but they're unable to see that a triangle is part of a rectangle. So my first activity is this right here. I have an outline of different shapes and the children will have all these different colors of rectangles, small rectangles, large rectangles, and triangles. But you can start off by asking them what the shape is. What is the shape? It's a rectangle. How many sides does it have? You can count one, two, three, four. So rectangles have four sides. And what is this shape? It's a triangle. How many sides does it have? One, two, three. Triangles have three sides. So the students would have to manipulate the small rectangles, large rectangles, and triangles to fit it on this sheet. The good thing about this is they can redo it if they mess up because it's Velcroed. Maybe later on, as their skill develops, the teacher can give the students a piece of blank paper with just a stack of rectangles and squares and triangles and have them see if they can fit it with by gluing it onto the paper. I would also, after we did this activity together, I would leave it in the manipulative center and if I wanted to take it up a notch, I would maybe put uh, letters on the outline as well as on the shapes and they can match the same letter to the same letter or maybe an uppercase letter to a lowercase letter and leave it in the literacy center. And so basically this is what it would look like when they're finished and then if they like, enjoyed it they could take it off and do it again. And this is spatial awareness because they're putting the shapes in a space. They're able to do it without any overlap or hanging off the edge. My second activity involves positional language and positional terms. This can be done in a couple of ways. The first is you can already have some 
animals on the flannel board. And you can ask the students, can you tell me where the cat is? The students will look and they'll say, the cat is on top of the barn. Then you can say, well, where is the tractor? The tractor is in front of the barn. They're using this positional word, on top of and in front of. Then they can, you can ask them where the hen is. The hen is next to the tree. Or you can have animals and tell them where to put the animals. You could say, can you put the pig in the mud? So the pig is now in the mud. Can you put the baby chick next to the hen, the mama, ch the mama chicken? So now the baby chick is next to the mama. Can you put the duck in the pond? Can you put the rooster on top of the barn? Can you put the farmer in front of the barn? Can you put the dog under the tree? And then one bird can go in the tree. Well, I don't have Velcro on this one. It must have fallen off. This one, would you say, it can go by the other bird and put him right there, by the other bird, or next to the other bird. And then the horse can go beside the barn. The goat could go between, between the tree and the barn. Or you could say between the dog and the barn. The donkey could go inside the barn. Get it in there. Okay. And then the little mouse could go below or under the tractor. And then this one, a little tricky, you could say, how could you put the sheep behind the barn? I've had some that didn't know how to do that. I've had some that actually took the barn off and put it behind the barn. And I've had some that just put it behind the felt board. And that works too, because that is behind the barn. And uh, for standards, don't call it a standard. For pre-K, these activities are able to recognize and describe uh, common shapes and understand and use words that identify different positions in space, like above and next to and behind and on top of. Kindergarten, they're able to compose simple shapes to co uh, compose larger ones, like the two triangles that made the rectangle. And then correctly named shapes regardless of their orientations or overall size. Just because this rectangle is this way, it's still a rectangle. And this is still a rectangle. They're just laid out differently, and the students could know that. And then I'll say for kindergarten standard, they're able to identify and describe shapes and describe the relative positions of these shapes using different terms, such as the side in front of and next to. Thank you very much. That is my presentation on spatial sense.